Welcome back to the Cheapo Spotlight. Yes, it is Cheapo time in the nation. The favorite time of day or week or month or year. Well, you, you get my idea. All right, on the Cheapo Spotlight today, we have the Thyssen's 18C. Thyssen's, Thyssen's, Thyssen's. God, you, 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 you call it what you want to call it. I'm just going to call it a Cheapo What's name. You say, well, just about everything. Now, this is definitely a name that besides being hard to pronounce, is sort of on the verge, the cusp, the cutting edge of cheapness. Yes, this brand is starting to show up all over the place with lots of cheapo goodness. Alrighty, without further ado, let's get this review party started. A ruby, baby. Yeah. We're gonna start things off by taking a look at what you get in the box. Actually, by also taking a look at what you don't get in the box, because sometimes what you don't get in the box is almost as important as what you do get in the box. Something like that. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. Yes, you do get that wonderful get top nine volt battery. A couple of crocodile clips. Oh, they're kind of kind of really tight there, but uh, hey, you know what? Better than nothing. You do get your standard set of test leads, probes, whatever you want to call them. Well, these are pretty light. Um, 1000 volt cat three, mm, yeah, take it with a grain of salt. Um, that being said, they actually feel okay. And it is a uh, pretty long, I'd say that's a good, almost three and a half, four feet long. So uh, yeah, not too shabby. And of course you get, the New York Times. You know, you get your instruction manual. Basically, a piece of paper with a quick overview of exactly what this little guy is all about. But, you know, it's always more fun. I gotta tell you, I actually like the color. Um, It's, once again, a slightly different hue of orange. But, um, yeah, it works. It works really nicely. I, I like what they've done with the color choice. The actual feeling in the hands, hey, you know what? No worries there, that rotary selector switch has that nice clackety clack and it is not gonna get stuck in between ranges. Always a good thing. As you can see, this is a non-auto ranging multimeter for all our auto ranging goodies out there. Well, I am sorry, but this is not the case this time. That's okay because non-auto ranging can be kind of fun and fast and shall I say furious? No, no, no. It's not a movie, damn it. It's a multimeter. Let's take a closer look at that selector switch, shall we? Starting off with the 20 millifarad capacitance range. Next up is 20 mega ohm. Diode and continuity. What would a cheapo meter be without NCV? Milliamp mode, up to 200 milliamps. High current AC, up to 10 amps. High current DC, up to 10 amps. Milliamps DC, up to 200 milliamps. Volts AC, up to 750 volts. Volts DC, up to 1000 volt. Millivolt range, up to 200 millivolt. Transistor tester, or HFE. Finally at the 12 o'clock, the one off position. Alrighty, let's take a look at that display for the first time. Turning it on. Hey, I like it. Nice and big. Try out the backlight. Wow, bright. Now there is some bleeding there on the left hand side, but it still is really bright. And uh, hey, overall, nice and bold. And look at that bar graph display. This is a 4,000 count multimeter. Uh, update refresh time is three times per second. But yeah, you do get that nice bar graph as well. So hey, for a cheapo meter, I gotta say kudos for the bar graph. The other buttons starting on the top left are the hold select. Hold, obviously, it is your standard touch hold. Find your reading, press the hold, and it will retain that measurement. Also, you have your backlight, and that stays lit for around 25, 30 seconds before the auto shutoff takes place. Next one is a little bit more interesting. You don't see this everywhere. This is a, a true RMS slash average uh, button. So basically, when you're in, let's say, a C mode, you're measure, measuring, um, oh, let's just take a household current, for example, and your initial reading perhaps will be 118, 119 volts. 
press the true RMS and voila, you should get a more accurate readout. We'll try that out shortly. Finally, on the right hand side, we have the HFE or transistor tester to test those and NPN or did a really nice job with the rotary selector switch in terms of the color coding. I do like that two tone offset, easy on the eyes and easy to see. Which Another nice feature is the milliamp is on a separate input from the 10 amp high current. We've had that voltage reference heating up for about 15 minutes and we're sitting at 248, 49 millivolts should be looking at 250. So pretty close, just not close enough. Next we want to see 2.50 and once again, close 2.49 volts. Taking a look now at resistance. These are the standard test leads and we, although we don't have a rel feature on this meter, let's take a look and see if there's any resistance in these leads. 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So very little minute, um, and you can always subtract that, do the math when you're taking a measurement, but 0 0.1 ohm is really nothing to worry about. Um, Take a look over here. This is a 0.5 ohm resistor. And that was pretty fast, 0.7 ohms. Let's take out the decade box sitting at nine mega ohms. So we're gonna have to bring that up to the max. 20 mega ohms sitting at nine-ish. All right, let's take it down a notch to eight mega ohm. Six mega ohm. 3 mega ohm, 1 mega ohm, spot on. So fairly fast to settle, looking good. Diode testing is next. Here we go, we're gonna start off with a standard diode, looking for that forward voltage drop. And there it is, 5.93 volts. Next up, light emitting diodes. Here we go, and I've had a few questions in the past. Um, you know, how often do you actually test LEDs? Why do you use them in a multimeter test? And believe it or not, at least personally, I go through a lot of LED testing, so I think it's kind of important to have a meter that I can at least light them up. Here we go, starting off with the green LED, and it is lit up ever so barely, and we do have a forward voltage drop, nice to see. Next to the yellow, same thing. Over to the red, yes, indeed, lit with a drop. Moving over to the blue, it is lit, but we do not have that visual indicator. Ah, oh, that's too bad, but at least it is lit. Finally, the white. Same thing, it is lit, but we're not getting a visual indicator. So three out of five in terms of doing both, but uh, yeah, the blue and the white were unable to give us that forward voltage drop. Hey, you know what? Still not too Look shabby. at that output voltage in diode mode for the 18C, almost four volts, 3.9 volts. Excellent. We're gonna have a head to head, a tete a tete between the DigiT TD87 and the Thesand 18C. Yes, I have come to my mantra. I'm calling it the Thesand, and it is all mellow, smooth, and I am now in. Here we go, sitting at 3.3 volts, the slightly higher resolution DT87, 3.36 and 3.35 for the star of the show, the Thesand 18C. Okay, we are taking it up, taking it up. I set up 10.4 volts, 10.47 versus 10.42, pretty well neck in neck. Here we go, 13.6 volts, 13.68, 13.6, up, up and away. 17.9 volts, is it 18? Let's call it 18, 18 even. 18.01 for the 87, eight, actually 17.94. 9.5 for the 18C, so we're off a little bit as we get higher in the voltage range. 25.9 volts, 26.01 for the DT87, and we are over limit on the 18C. Now you can see they are both manual ranging meters. The 87 has a 6 to 60 volt increment, whereas we are a uh, 20 to 200 volts, so I'm gonna have to take it up a notch, get them back in the game. Here we go, 25.8 volts for the 18C. 
Gonna max it out now. 29.3 volts, 29.34 for the DT87, 29.1 for the 18C. So there you have it. I'd have to give this round to the DT87 uh, a little faster and a little more accurate. Already Aphrodite, it is continuity time. Stock probes in my hot little hands. Three, two, one. Um, latched. Ah, it's, 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 you know, it's on the verge of being good, but it's, it's kind of just there. Mm, let's try the probe masters. Probe masters, take us home. Here we go. Wow, what a difference. What a difference. Loud latched right on. Hey, oh, that's a 9.5 out of 10. Loving it. Maximum output in decibel mode, a very nice 78 dBAs, loud and latched. Love now it. sitting in AC mode, now they don't call this a true RMS meter, they call it a true average. What the hell does that mean anyway? At the top here we have that true average button, and this is what we have to press when we want to get a true RMS reading. We'll start off with a basic AC test without invoking the true RMS. And here we go. It's coming up as about 122 volts. Now what we're going to do without removing the test leads is we're going to hit our true RMS button. And bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, 121.5 volts. Disable the true RMS, we are up to 122.4, about, about a volt difference. So kind of a nifty little feature. Nonetheless, I think that's kind of neat. Yeah, so while true RMS for everything initially sounds like a pretty darn good idea, you know what? It's not always the best choice. In fact, in some cases, it might even be better just to use averaging. Um, especially if we're talking like low level signals because of settling time, what have you. So yeah, it's always nice to have this option to take off that true RMS and go into average mode. That's what I call Next sizzle. Next up is capacitance. Now this is a 20 millifarad, 20,000 microfarad range. Pretty darn good. We'll start off with the low side of things. Nice four nanofarad, 4.3 to be exact. I'm just going to stick that directly into those inputs and look at that. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang four nanofarad spot on next up a 4700 microfarad capacitor electrolytic here we go in the millifarad range and there we are 4.49 nice and finally a 10,000 microfarad or 10 millifarad it is thinking we're getting a nice visual display and boom 9.83 millifarad, excellent. Next hey, up is fast. NCV like mode, and I gotta say, this is very sensitive. Probably one of the most sensitive NCVs I've seen in a while, go figure. So putting it into NCV, EF, and right away, because we are surrounded by electronics, it is coming on. And look at that. Wow. This guy means business. Um, yeah, now if I take it away from all things electronics, It stops. And believe me, there's a lot of electronics in the lab. But as soon as it comes anywhere near, it is non-contact voltage business, baby. Wow. Already it is it's time stuck. to go into the dark side. Yeah, we're going to do a teardown, baby. Here we go. Okay, that was quite the process. Four Phillips screws. Looks like they are going right into plastic. Here we go. And we are in. And take a look at the back, first of all. Yeah, yeah, we know, we know. I'm not even gonna say it. Not even gonna say it. Ugh. Alrighty, let's take a closer look. Input jacks are your standard variety. 
They are encased in that plastic housing. They are thin filament metal. Uh, nothing else to be said about it. On the high current side, we have this small 250 volt 10 amp ceramic fuse and a couple of mouths as well as that really tiny current shunt. On the milliamp side, we have a small glass fuse. 200 milliamp is the only rating on it as well as a small a diode clamp. That's it, that's all. Moving up the board, no man's land, we have this lonely PTC and we have this small resistor array. Uh, here we have the oscillator. We have a couple of surface mount capacitors and our speaker. The IC is cobbed and the non-contact voltage, as you can see, is very, very minute, built right into the PCB. Fab date of October 19th, 2016. Wow, so this is a few years old. Closing thoughts on the T-Synth 18C. Hey, you know what? I like it, I like it. Yeah, this is a cool little feature. I like that non-true RMS mode. Definitely comes in handy dandy at times. Yes, kind of cool. What else do I like? Well, just about everything. It's got a nice big bold display, has a backlight that actually works. Yeah, it doesn't stay on all the time, but heck, what else is new? Has a pretty good feature set of ranges. Would have liked to have seen the resistance mode at least doubled, but hey, beggars can't be cheap. Internally, not the best in terms of input protection, but keep this one on the bench or close to home and you should be fine. All in all, feels good in the hand, has a nice bit of heft to it, and generally speaking, I like it. And you know what, this is a cheapo. I paid 17 bucks Canadian. Yeah, about 13 bucks US. How can you go wrong? The t 18C gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.